Hi there and welcome to Capital View. This week, two regional leaders, AIA DMK Supremo Jay Lalita and West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, have been in the news. Jay Lalita has been acquitted in the assets case by the Karnataka High Court, and Mamta Banerjee, the West Bengal Chief Minister, has been seen to be engaging in cordial talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We're asking the question. Are these two regional satraps now going to be important in national politics? And is Prime Minister Modi going to be forced to reach out to regional leaders more than he has been in the past? Joining me on that question, senior journalist Veera Raghav, political editor of the Hindu, joining me from Bangalore. Senior journalist R. Mani, joining me from Chennai. And here in the studio, editor of ABP, Joyant the Ghoshal, and senior journalist Kalyani Shankar. Thanks, everyone, very much indeed for being here. Vira Raghav, first across to you. A year ago, Jaya Lalita was even being considered as a potential prime minister. There were posters saying Jaya for PM. Then she had this setback with this court case. Now, with this incredible acquittal and this bounce back to power, she really is a comeback queen. Do you see her restricting herself to Tamil Nadu and the uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Assembly, or do you see her playing for a larger role in national politics? I think given the situation in the country at the moment in terms of the numbers that the BJP won and Narendra Modi won in 2014, I think it's pretty clear she will have to play a role confined for her image to Tamil Nadu. Having said that, Sagarika, there has always been a cordial relationship between the AIDMK and the BJP. That is a very different question from an electoral understanding or an electoral alliance between the two parties, which I see extremely un unlikely because there are inherent contradictions between the two. And Jayalalitha herself would like to go on her own steam. So she would like to confine herself to Tamil Nadu. Her focus at the moment will be in, in Tamil Nadu to get back in power next year. So her focus will be in Tamil Nadu. Mr. R. Mani, is she likely to call snap polls to take advantage of the surge of support that she's receiving and take advantage of the fact that the DMK's fortunes are declining? I don't think so. She will go for snap polls. A full one year is there. 2016 May is the scheduled time for elections in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I, I don't think that she will take that risk of going to snap polls, snap polls as of now. She will try to consolidate her position. She will try to initiate a number of welfare schemes in the state. And uh, given the status of uh, opposition, which is in almost in total disarray, I don't think she will take uh, that risk as of now. How do you see the relations panning out? Do you see Modi reaching out to Jayalalitha more? Because after all, he needs that support in the Rajya Sabha. She has 11 seats in the Rajya Sabha to pass legislation. Do you see her, him reaching out to her? Well, I think that Mo Prime Minister Modi has probably realized that you know he cannot play solo anymore. One year is over now, and this one year he has realized that he has to have the support of other people, not only his own allies, but also the other regional satraps like Naveen Patnayak, or Mamta Banerjee, or Jai Lalita. So he has been doing it one by one. So he's reached out to Mamta Banerjee. Now they are on equal good terms. And then Jai Lalita, he's always been very friendly with her. But then this case was a problem, so he couldn't directly talk to her. And uh, now he will be able to talk to her very directly and also through the emissaries they were talking to each other. Now that problem is gone after the acquittal. So I am sure that they will both uh, uh, you know, be on very good terms. But the one problem which Modi will have to solve is what do they do about Tamil Nadu? You know, right. the BJP because has the been BJP very ambitious. If you a political competitor in Tamil Nadu, then how can you uh, count on uh, Jayalalitha's support? It's the same thing in uh, uh, Bengal, isn't it, Jayanta Goshal? I mean, we saw this week this big reach out by Narendra Modi to Mamta Banerjee, uh, particularly after those, all those Sharuda scam cases and all of that. And we saw Mamta also uh, being on very cordial terms with Narendra Modi. So how do you see that relationship playing out? What's, what's happening there? Sagarika, it's a new chapter. And if you can remember, I, I mean, I, I can remember that Narendra Modi actually consistently he was soft towards Mamta earlier also. Mm. And after the hat trick in Gujarat, when the oath taking ceremony took place, Narendra Modi wanted Mamta Banerjee should come. And he wrote a letter to Mamta Banerjee that time. Mamta could not go. Mamta sent somebody to Akhilesh, mm -hmm. oath taking ceremony, but not Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi requested, you can send somebody else, but Mamta was not ready to send. But Narendra Modi, again in UP, he compared before election that Mayavati and Mulayam, you should not compare with Mamta 
because Mamta fights for her own state, not for personal agenda. Right. But afterwards, the state BJP thought that it's a polarization of politics, and if you don't go against Mamta, then the political benefit, the political dividend, BJP cannot get. Because the BJP president Amit Shah went to Bengal and said, I want exactly. to uproot the Trinamool exactly. from the state. So the inside BJP, the prevalent line was, the Amit Shah's line was, that we have to fight. And I took an interview, I talked to Amit Shah. Amit Shah said that Prime Minister can meet Mamta Banerjee uh, 100 times. Center state relation so can continue. So you're saying there's a personal BJP, kind of warmth between yeah, the two of the, them. The, the, this time especially, Sagarika, Narendra Modi told several people after this meeting that she is sincere, she is nationalist, she is a doer. Avinash Raghav, you know, Jay Lalita, the ultimate comeback queen. Is she? Has she really attained cult status now in Tamil Nadu? The challenge here for her, Shagarika, will be uh, now. First, after she comes back as chief minister, there has been a perception that in the last seven months the ship has been sort of not very stable in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. Now, she will have to uh, uh, deliver uh, or from uh, the AIDMK an image of having performed in this term as, as, as chief minister. And that's got to be crucial for her. And that would be priority number one for her after mm -hmm. she comes back. And then, right. uh, uh, as, as it's been pointed out, I don't think at the moment it would be a little far-fetched to make a speculation on an, a snap poll. There's still time. Uh -huh. Uh, till next year on that. Right. And of course, for the DMK, Mr. Mani, uh, this is not good news because if uh, Jalilza had not been acquitted, if she had been debarred from contesting, uh, then the DMK could have uh, rested a little easy. But now, it seems as if they're going to be consigned to the uh, to oblivion. Is the DMK now seriously worried with Jalilza on the comeback trail? No, I won't call it as they're going for an oblivion. But certainly, as you're, uh, you're, you're right, that they are down and under. Uh, after all, the 2G verdict is expected in three to four months time from now. And the party was not able to win even a single Lok Sabha seat. Uh, in fact, they have put all their eggs in one basket, which is the, uh, uh, the verdict in the Karnataka High Court, which actually went against their own wishes. They are actually struggling nowadays to come to grips with the uh, yesterday's development. She will also ask for her pound of flesh. She will ask more money for Tamil Nadu. The, the other parties are, will talk about fisherman issue with uh, Sri Lanka. Then Kachatiwu, is, which right. is another one of her favorite thing. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Sri Lankan Tamil issue. Mm -hmm. See, these things, she will harden her position. And Mr. Modi will not be able to ignore her now. See, all these days he was just going ahead with this. He will but not now, be able to ignore, ignore her. Ignore her uh, demands and whatever resolutions they pass in the assembly, all that. And he needs her. And he for Sri Lanka policy, she will play he a bigger role. He needs her support. So that's the quid pro quo, isn't it, Jayanto? Yeah. That you need. Modi needs support for yeah. GST. Modi needs support for land acquisition. Exactly. Exactly. So he can't afford to alienate the state satraps anymore. Yeah. Rasagarika, exactly. one more point I want to say. She will assert herself in the national politics now. She will. With her 37 MPs in Lok Sabha and 11 MPs in Rajya Sabha. So her role nationally also will increase now with her comeback. And as you say, she has always had a personality cult. Uh, she has built around her, like her mentor MJR. Mm -hmm. So that will become much more now. Her personality cult will be even greater. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but again, you know, the issue is if you are a political competitor in the state, then actually the center your relations will be uh, will, will 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 be that of enemies. Now, with, in the municipal election, the BJP has been reduced to third place yeah. in 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 Bengal. So that's why perhaps Mamta has a more comfort factor with yeah, the BJP. Yeah, comfort factor. But the, you know, the state BJP leaders they are not very happy with this Bonhami. Uh -huh. This is a very interesting thing. I remember when Narsimara was Prime Minister and Mamta was fighting against Jyoti Vasu's government. Right. And when Narsimara and Jyoti Vasu's relationship was good and yeah. Mamta was unhappy. Right. So now the BJP state leadership is just like Mamta Banerjee's, the then Mamta Banerjee. Right. Now they are unhappy with the bonhami of the center and state. Right. Because, you know, if Rajiv Gandhi goes to uh, Jyoti Vasu's house that time, Dashmunsi was upset. Right. So, <laughs> so they're unhappy. The carters so are unhappy with the bonhomi at the top. Yeah. So this the carters are unhappy with the bonhomi at the top. This quid pro quo, the state leaders are unhappy. They are saying that if you are go, if you if you if you are keen to go with this bonhomi, the political space is will, will be squeezed. Create, will be squeezed. The CPM and Congress will take that space. Right. And we will be the victim. So, so actually, the BJP will have to scale down its ambitions in Tamil Nadu and West Bengal if it wants cooperation at the exactly. centre. 
Exactly. Uh, Vidya Raghav, what is the relationship between uh, Jayalalitha and Modi? Uh, you know, do, will Jayalalitha uh, offer conditional support to Modi, uh, or, or, or will 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 she be wary of the BJP's uh, growth and you know possible growth of the BJP's uh, possible toehold in Tamil Nadu? What what's likely to be the equation between Jayalalitha and Modi? Let's get one thing clear. The BJP is a non-player in Tamil Nadu except in one parliamentary constituency and that was proven by the fact that they had a strong third front alliance and yet could not win the kind of seats that they wanted to win or at least have the presence or the vote share that they wanted. So the BJP doesn't have a presence. So that's not what her worry is. What I mean when you talk of Jayalalitha and the BJP and not Jayalalitha and Narendra Modi, the two different things. When we're talking of Jayalalitha and the BJP, we'll have to get one thing very clear: that they have a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of identical uh, ideological stands on several issues. They could, they would be able to vote for each other or support for each other at uh, at a parliamentary politics level or at a, uh, a, a into when it comes to a numbers game. But when it comes to an electoral understanding between the two parties, the reason why Jayalalitha will be averse to the BJP is because the moment she goes with BJP, she unites the rest of the opposition in Tamil Nadu. And that's dangerous for her. And that's the only reason why she would be wary of the BJP. Expect her to have the most cordial of equations with the centre and with Narendra Modi. Right. That's a, that's a very interesting point. Mr. Mani, do, do you agree with that? That politically... Uh, it, it may not suit Vijay Lalita to be seen to be too close to the center and to Mr. Modi. Absolutely. You see, BJP is a baggage in Tamil Nadu. Anybody joins with any major Dravidian party joins with BJP. The advantage will be for the BJP and the loss will be for the Dravidian parties. I just want to add one more point in this issue that uh, it, it may not be easy for Jayalalitha to openly support Modi because you see the she is actually in my opinion in a catch 22 situation as of now mm -hmm. the appeal the karnataka government is the basically is the prosecuting agency in this issue and they have every right to go for an appeal in this jailita's case mm -hmm. and of course this decision will be taken by the top political leadership of the congress party so i think jailita may not easily uh, you know align with the modi or the bjp dispensation at this juncture the stakes are very high she's in i think in a very tricky situation now we have to, we have to take this also into account she ha she the stakes are very high. She can't afford to ally with Mr. Modi, and nor can nor, she can't afford to go to. Uh, but she said that also. No, you know, when I'm Mr. Telling. When Modi said we are Team India, she said, but then we can't be targeted. Mamta Banerjee made that very clear that we can't be Team India. We are always targeted. She made a few points there. So do you think she also has to be very careful? No, what, uh, what not to what go too problem, far. What problem Jayalalitha has? This is the baggage of BJP. That problem Mamta also has. Just two points I will mention. Number one, 30% Muslim vote in Bengal. Or once she burnt her fingers. Right. So it is very difficult to, to join or outside support to NDA. It's a, it's a, it's a completely impractical imp proposition today. Right, right. So right. it's not possible. The quid pro quo, that doesn't mean the political alliance. This is mm -hmm. number one. And number two, if BJP is weak today and Congress CPM um, uh, if they make alliance, mm -hmm. it is bad for Mamta. Right. The division of vote is very important. So if there is an increase of vote bank of BJP, the division of vote among the non mamta right, parties right, will right, be more. Right, right. It's just, you, you just you remember when CPM was in power, the non CPM exactly. parties, that's why Mamta was uh, always, the, she, she, she tried to form a Maha Jod, the grand alliance, yes. to only to, uh, to, to combat that division of vote. So today, it's a, it's a Mamta versus others. And if the BJP is nothing today in Bengal, it's, it's, it's not good for Mamta. She can't, uh, she can't afford to unite the opposition against exactly. her. Uh, uh, do you see in any way the formation of that non-UPA, non-NDA, that federal front that was being spoken about before the two, uh, 2014 elections? Now you see Mamta Banerjee uh, you know, returning with big victory. Jail Alitha acquitted. She's on the comeback trail. You've got a Naveen Patnaik there in uh, Odisha. Do, do you see that that... that, that formation, getting any any kind of uh, getting together and putting pressure on the central government? Well, you see Janata Parivar with great difficulties trying to unite. That is one part of it. But then with uh, uh, increased, uh, uh, you know, influence, Jailalitha or even Mamta. Mamta now has got this 3,000 crore package also. So they would be much more strident 
than what they had been earlier. And moreover, you remember you had we had this UNP at one point of right, time, right. With, in which Mamta was also a member. But, sorry, Jailalta was also a member. But then because of the ego clash between her and Mulayam Singh, that didn't take off at all. Right. So all of them are a personality cult oriented They're all personality leaders. cult parties. So, so uh, to, cult for leaders, them like to, Modi, yeah, like. then who would be the chairman? Who would be right. the convener? In this only, that kind of front will break. So I'm very, they, but they will concentrate in their own states. Like uh, Jailalita did last time. She got hold of CPI, CPM and the smaller parties. The arithmetic, already she has a good arithmetic. 46% is there. Right. But then she'll try to get out of a smaller, in, in case she wants to, but I, my sense is she'll go it alone now. She will go it alone, but, yeah. the, but the regional leaders are increasingly going to be able to yes. call the shots because yes. they are such powerful forces in their own states. Let's take a short break at this point. We'll come back with lots more on the other side and ask whether Narendra Modi, as part of his ruling style, is going to have to reach out much more to the state chief ministers, reach out much more to the regional forces than he has so far. That's after the break. Welcome back to Capital View. We're talking about the rise of two regional leaders this week, Mamta Banerjee and Jayalalitha. One acquitted the other at the receiving end of an outreach from the Prime Minister asking, does Narendra Modi now have to reach out to regional leaders and chief ministers? Veera Raghav, uh, does Narendra Modi have to reach out to regional leaders more? Because uh, after all, he does need to get important legislation passed. He does need to build consensus. He has to realize that successful projects on the ground can only be implemented by uh, chief ministers and not necessarily by prime ministers. So he's going to have to perhaps change his ruling style a little bit and opt for much more coalition and dialogue with the chief ministers. The most important is perception that he is authoritarian and it's just a one-man government. To change that, he will have to learn to deal with, with, these, uh, uh, with these potential uh, allies at some stage but at least partners in his development process he's been trying to send that message across and as long as he doesn't need a political alliance or they don't need a political alliance I think it wouldn't be very difficult for him to deal with these people because let's not forget that as much as Narendra Modi needs them they also need Narendra they Modi. They also need and Narendra Modi. Cooperative federalism that Mr. Modi uh, speaks about, that that is going to increasingly have to characterize the government because it's all very well to have a big majority, but at the same time you have to reach out to powerful people, particularly if they're as powerful as Jail Lalitha and Mamta Banerjee. Absolutely. See, for any legislation, for example, land, land acquisition bill or even the GST or the real estate bill, uh, the Modi government is totally dependent on allies. And Jailalitha with 48 with 48 MPs, uh, and in case of a joint parliament session, this 48 MPs uh, will play a major role. Right. Now there are more and more regional satraps are emerging. Right. Now you have uh, Mayavati, you have Mam uh, Jailalitha, you have Mamta, you have uh, Lalu Prasad, then you have Navin Patnayak. There are quite a lot right. of them, and it's only increasing; it's not decreasing. But that itself is a very strange thing in a democracy like India. Even in the two 2014 elections, when Modi had done so well, but these leaders, Naveen Patnaik or Mamta or Jayalalitha, they had held their vote. Right. So Mr. Modi is in the same position so, as Mr. Vajpayee, yes. isn't he? He has yeah. to deal with my. No, Vajpayee uh, used other people. Jayalalitha and Mamta Banerjee. Vajpayee no, used house. other people. <laughs> right. But uh, one but, thing I want to tell one yeah. small thing that you know there is a difference that in AIDMK, DMK. BJP's relationship with these two Dravidian parties, I mean, we have seen both the parties actually were with BJP. But here in West Bengal, CPM, it is completely, it, it is not impossible that they will go with BJP. So Mamta, when Mulayam Singh Yadav recently called right. Mamta to right. come to Delhi, and Nitish Kumar also uh, a very good right. relationship, but Mamta is not ready to go that front now because she is saying that you leave CPM then I can go right. to your She front. can't possibly go in a front which is the CPM then. Let's not forget that we may be overrating this factor here that in Tamil Nadu, every five years parties have changed. Right. That they've been right. swept out of power. So that way Jayalalitha has, you know, won every five years. And, She's and so won has every the DMK. Years. That's an important uh, the point. Court, the court verdict, uh, as far as this court verdict goes, Chagrika, I think it was 
uh, it was it was a, a major surprise for many legal observers uh, uh, the the acquittal that came there is a sort of mood of uh, anti graft sweeping india people are worried the public is worried about uh, political corruption uh, do you think the kind of corruption cases that are there against jalalitha of course here she's been acquitted but again questions have been raised about this verdict rita raghav is right to point that out many experts have raised very fundamental questions about this particular uh, uh, judgment uh, do you think that will affect her politically that was the case she would not have won 37 seats in the last lok sabha elections uh, we are registering almost 44 percentage of votes so the dmk commons just 20 percent corruption is a non issue as far yeah. as she is concerned it's a, it's almost a political non issue compare with the any yeah i won't call it as a non issue but if you compare it tamil nadu with the rest of india the you know the movement against corruption is very low joint so elections are looming next year in tamil nadu and west bengal how do you see these two leaders uh, playing out their equation with the bjp led uh, government at the center how what kind of strategy do you think the mamta particularly will adopt mamta cannot go with bjp never mamta cannot uh, get entry into nda mm -hmm. and i think mamta may follow the nabin patnaik's model right that she will not go either uh with the third front or this federal front whatever you say uh but she will not go with nda right but she will try to maintain the relationship with modi government till election as far as the elections are concerned i think she will go it alone and she is right now riding on the sympathy wave and the second thing is that she has already the amma canteen and things like that right. they are they are catching up so you think she's poised uh, for a big victory and, and then the third thing is that she should weaken the opposition right. supposing the the 2g case comes against dmk and that's going to sort of you know weaken the uh, the DMK. other thing of course is this this verdict could embolden the other leaders who have cases against them for example mulayam singh yadav for right. example uh, you know they, they they were all worried that the anti graft mood in india exactly. would see them all being convicted yeah. but now with this but the they have point got some relief is, they've got some welcome relief perhaps all these but the leaders. point now is all these people have their little fiefdom and they want to rule that fiefdom their his her main point would be now to keep uh, tamil nadu the next time uh, you know come back in tamil nadu that same as mamta also she so they to, want to be strong to ensure that she, they have to be strong yeah. veer raghav do you see her surging to a big victory in the next well I, i think it's too early to i think it's too early to predict that uh, at the moment uh, i i think she will have to stabilize her ship there there are issues with the administration in tamil nadu serious issues which needs to be addressed uh, you will uh, but mr mani do you do you agree with mr mani that corruption is a non issue in 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 tamil nadu corruption corruption has been a non issue what's the choice in front of the voter you've got 2g which uh, dmk stung right. by 2g and it wasn't as if their government was very clean the last mm -hmm. government and then you have a non starter of a third force with people like ramdas and vijaykanth who can't even hold a press conference right. uh, 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 with 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 the basic level of dignity what choice does the voter have right what choice does the voter have mr mani what what you do you think also that jayalalitha is now heading towards a big victory in this uh, in the next assembly elections coming up next year no 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 no, no you can't you can't uh, usually predict that you see okay. i'll just want to add one more thing that still one more year is there and uh, who knows that if this judgment will not be turned around in the supreme court right one year is a long period so we have to wait for that also i, I think this this results of 2016 assembly elections largely depend on on two things one is the 2g verdict and the likely outcome in the supreme court if the case is if the appeal is taken up on a fast mode right uh, so it, it it's too early to predict any kind of victory for jail alitha i just want to ask you one last question do do you see mr modi now realizing that you can have that big victory in the center you can have an absolute government absolute majority but you still have to bring in the chief ministers into decision making is that a exactly. change that mr modi has to make exactly you know this is not only for the rajya sabha dearth of numbers it's not only this that, that is a short term uh, strategy mm -hmm. but the basic thing is that that there is a growing perception that you have the mandate in the lok sabha but you are ignoring the culture of political pluralism in our country right so now narend modi is trying to project himself that he is not anti federalism right he has he's, to really make he, cooperative federalism more, work more now the co cooperative federalism that is the mantra of akhand bharat right. so 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 the without the state government center cannot be strong right. that is the new 
I mean that Narendra Modi's new uh, that mantra. That has to be his new personality. So, uh, in fact, uh, you can have a majority government at the center, but when you have powerful regional satraps like a Jayalalitha, like a Mamta Banerjee, then however powerful you may be as prime minister, you're going to have to reach out to them. You're going to have to have dialogue with them. And that is perhaps what we're seeing the beginning of uh, it, with this particular acquittal of Jayalalitha and the outreach to Mamta Banerjee. Perhaps that's where the prime ministerial uh, campaign of Mr. Modi is now going to head. Thank you very much indeed to all my panelists for joining me. Thank you very much for watching Capital View. See you again next week. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.